All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the fifth part of the video for section 8.4. Uh, continuing on with our study of vectors and in this section we'll be looking at uh, doing an application problem that kind of takes a bunch of the processes we've been working on with vectors and puts them all together. Okay, so here is our problem. So Beyonce, our favorite person in the world, is out doing some surveying and surveying is where they go out and like uh, kind of do some measurements of the land, look at some elevation changes and whatnot. And we're told that uh, she starts at some point and then she walks six miles, 30 degrees north of east, then four miles directly north, and then two miles directly southwest. We want to use that information to figure out how far she is from her starting point. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I first look at this problem, you know, I could kind of conceptualize it like, okay, she's going to draw, like, you know, go some distance north of east, then directly north, and then back southwest. But when I draw it, then, like, you know, and I try to use geometry to try to figure out the distance from where she starts to where she ends, um, you know, it's not quite obvious how I would do that, or it seems like a very challenging problem. However, vectors allow us to solve, solve this in a fairly straightforward way, okay? And um, as I just kind of uh, show, the way we're gonna start this is by uh, drawing some pictures. So I'm gonna start with that first vector. So we're told that she walks six miles, 30 degrees north of east. And so if I imagine and I know I just erased it, but I want to kind of put it up here. This is the vector representing that first little piece that she walks. So first of all, we know she's gone six miles. So that would be our <clears throat> magnitude of our vector. And then she's going 30 degrees north of east. So because she's going north of east, that's why I have the um, uh, vector point in the upper right direction. And then that 30 degrees north of east, if you think about it in a compass, right? So if I draw, like say a compass like this, this would be north, east, south, and west. She's going 30 degrees north of east, literally means go from east, go 30 degrees in the northern direction, and that's where you'll be. Okay, so that first vector there would look like that. Well, then she goes uh, four miles directly north, right? So which means from the end or the terminal point of that um, six mile vector, she's gonna go straight up. So that'd be straight north and I meant to use this color. Okay, four miles. So like that. And then she's going to go two miles directly southwest and from where she currently is. So again, kind of think of a uh, compass here being on the terminal point of that four mile vector. This is the north, east, south, and west. So if she goes two miles directly southwest. I mean, she's actually going to kind of head back in the direction of where she started from. That'd be this two mile vector here. And again, we want to know how far she is from her starting point. So we want to know what's the distance between where she started and where she currently is. And we're going to measure that on a straight line. Okay. And you might also notice that geometrically, what we're kind of doing with the six mile, the four mile, and the two mile vector is adding them all together, right? We've taken the four mile one, put its initial point at the terminal point of the six mile vector and then taking the terminal point, or excuse me, the initial point of the two mile vector, put it at the terminal point of the four mile vector. And so like they've all been added together. So this red vector here, which I meant to do in a different color, um, that would be the resultant vector we would get from adding those three. And I'm gonna call that vector capital B for our favorite pop star here. Okay, and if we want to find the distance that she needs to go to get back to where she started, what we're really looking for is the magnitude of that vector B. All right, so how are we going to find that? 
Well, what we're going to do first is find the components of each of those given vectors. So I'm going to kind of do some separate calculations here. So I have the six mile vector, which I know is at an angle of 30 degrees north of east. I've got the four mile vector going directly north. And then I've got the two mile uh, vector going southwest. So I'm going to kind of draw that here north, east, southwest. It's going directly southwest, two miles. Which, if it's going directly southwest, that means it's going right between the middle of south and west. And as you might imagine, the angle between the south and the west here is 90 degrees if we're going right through the middle of it. That means this is a 45 degree angle here. And if we want to find the angle then that corresponds with that vector, we have to measure back from the initial side. So from here, go all the way around, which means we're looking at a 225 degree vector, right? Because we're 45 degrees past the horizontal there. OK, so we can use all this information now to help us find our um, component forms. I'm also going to give each of these vectors a name. So I'm going to call this first one here W, second one here X, and the two mile vector I'm going to call Y. And so to find the components of W, we know we do the magnitude of the vector, which in this case is six, times the cosine of the angle, which is 30 degrees, comma, again, the and that's way too large, sorry. Let me write that smaller. Okay, so we do six times the cosine of 30 degrees, and then six times the sine of 30 degrees for the y component. Uh, cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two. Sine of 30 degrees is one half. And so we multiply these out six times root three over two. That will become three root three and six times one half becomes three. Okay, so we got that. For the four mile vector, we could do a similar thing. We could figure out the angle and do, you know, the magnitude times cosine of the angle and the magnitude times sine of the angle. If we also think about where the components of a vector come from, right? It's the uh, displacement horizontally and vertically to go from the initial point to the terminal point. So here's our initial point, here's our terminal point. We'll notice that um, to go from the initial point to the terminal point horizontally, we don't move at all, right? We're kind of, it doesn't go left or right at all. So that tells us our x component or our horizontal component would be zero. And then vertically from the initial point to the terminal point, we go up four units. So it tells us then that our components would be zero, four. Okay. And then finally for the components of the vector y, we'll again use the formula of the magnitude times the cosine of the angle and then the magnitude times the sine of the angle. Okay, and we work that out. We'll do two times the cosine of 225 is negative root two over two. The sine, uh, two times the sine of 225, which is also neg negative root two over two. And then we multiply these out, twos can cancel. And so we would end up with negative root two comma negative root two as the components of y. Okay. And you may be thinking, well, we're probably done now, right? No such luck. Because remember, again, we're trying to find the magnitude of the vector b, which means that in order to do that, we need to find the components of the vector b. And as we see from over here, the vector b comes from adding the vector w plus the vector x plus the vector y, which means we can add their components. So we can do three root three comma 
three plus zero four plus negative root two comma negative root two. And even though we're adding multiple uh, more than two vectors here, as you can imagine, the way it would work is we'll add all of the x components. So when we do that, it looks like we get the x component of the vector b being 3 root 3 minus root 2. Since we do 3 root 3 plus 0 minus root 2 or plus negative root 2, you can't combine the 3 root 3 and the minus root 2 because they're not like terms. So we'll leave them like that. And then for the y component, we have the 3, the 4, and the negative root 2. So 3 plus 4 gives us 7 minus root 2. We can just leave as 7 minus square root of 2. So now we have the components of the vector b. And as you recall, once we have the components, we can now find the magnitude, which is what we need, right? OK, so let me erase all of this. All right, so to find the magnitude, remember what we do is that the magnitude squared, so in this case, the magnitude of the vector b squared, that's a terrible color, sorry, let me pick a better one. Do this. So the magnitude of the vector b squared equals the x component squared. So three root three minus root two squared plus the y component squared, so 7 minus root 2 squared. And you could work out the squares of each of those things. However, in this case, I think it's going to be easiest to do square root on both sides here. And on the left-hand side, it cancels out. So we end up with just the magnitude of b equals the square root of 3 minus root 3 minus root 2 squared plus seven minus root two squared. And I would suggest plugging that in the calculator all at one time. And when we do that, we end up with the magnitude here being 6.746 miles. Okay, so that's how far she needs to go from where she is to get back to where she started. And again, that's the magnitude of our vector B. Okay. Now, final thing to think about, that vector b, does it actually represent the direction she needs to go to get back to where she started? And hopefully you're saying no. The answer is no, Cody, right? Because she's right here, and she needs to go this way to get back. But the vector, the red vector, is pointing to the northeast, and she needs to go southwest to get back. So let's say we wanted to figure out an angle of a vector to help us uh, determine the direction she needs to go to get back home. How would we do that or what would that look like? Well, hopefully you might agree with me that it would look like the vector b just be reversed in the opposite direction, right? Instead of pointing northeast, it should point southwest. And how could we get such a vector? Well, if we take the vector b, take the negative of it, which would mean switch the signs on everything in the components, Okay, this vector we get here now um, describes the direction she needs to go to get back home. Okay. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.